Good afternoon and happy Friday, City Year. My name is Daria Laycock and I proudly serve as an AmeriCorps member with City Year Orlando. Service this year has been unconventional to say the least. From social distancing to mass, it's been a challenging year for all of us. For me personally, it's been difficult to build relationships with students who I only sometimes see through a computer screen. But at the end of the day, I'm sure that all our hard work will lead to student success. With only three months left in the service year, I'm sure many of you, like me, are wondering what the future holds. And that's why I'm so excited to be here to kick off Comcast Career Day with NBC host and correspondent Stephanie Goss. Steph, thank you so much for being here with us today. I was wondering if you could start by sharing a little bit about what you do with NBC and what inspired you to pursue a career in journalism. Hi, Daria. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you for asking me. I love City Year. I applaud you guys on all the good work that you do. Um, so I am an NBC News correspondent, like you said. I am a general assignment correspondent, which means I cover a huge spectrum of different kinds of stories, from the Olympics to, in the last year, really lots of COVID stories. I do them for the Today Show in the morning, nightly news in the evening, and MSNBC throughout the day. Um, many of the core are feeling a certain sense of uncertainty or uneasiness when it comes to our education or our career plans. Can you reflect on a time early in your career where you maybe felt uncertain or had to navigate a difficult situation? What lessons did you learn? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I remember uh, when I was graduating from college, which is not exactly where you guys are, but I remember thinking that it was this great abyss. Like suddenly, all of a sudden, you had all these plans and schedules and schooling, and then you just kind of fell off a cliff. Um, that's too severe a way to look at it, because the truth of the matter is, is that you are about to embark on a series of small steps that get you down the road to where you want to go. In my case, I graduated from school and decided to do the Peace Corps, which is similar in a sense to what you guys have done, which you've decided to give back and do a year of service. In my case, it was two years of service outside of the United States. And for me, that was a moment where I was able to reflect on what I like and what I want to do. And I remember specifically a moment sitting in a hammock outside of the hut that I lived in in the Dominican Republic and listening to a news report from the former Yugoslavia about a terrible massacre in the city of Srebrenica. And I remember thinking about the fact that there were reporters on the ground there who were able to record what was going on and to tell the world about it. And for me, that just seems so exciting to witness the history and, and such an enormous responsibility to share that story. And also the excitement of being able to travel the world and have that be your job. And that very much guided me. So I would say to people, of course, you're feeling uncertain, but listen to yourself. And look around the world and see what it is that excites you. Perhaps it's something from your city year experience, but perhaps it's something that you're going to do down the road. And just remember, whatever you do as your next step, it's not the last step. And you can change and pivot at any point in life. The Corps has about three or four months left in our service year, and we're trying to finish strong. As a journalist, when you've been working hard on a story, what are some skills that you use to finish strong? Well, very often when you work on a story, especially if it's a complicated one that you've been doing for a while, it's, it's sometimes possible to get so close to something that you have a hard time seeing where you're going to go with it. And, and that can be the case, I would imagine, too, just for city year, as well as you, as you finish up and you're thinking, oh, God, I, there's so much that I want to do. Um, for me, in my job, what I often need to do is take a step back and look at the story that I'm working on and try to remember and focus on what the original purpose was and what is the message that I want to bring. But the other thing that I really do is I rely on the people around me and specifically people who hadn't been working on the story with me because those are the people who are outside of it can look at it and say, maybe you should go in this direction. So I would, I would say for you guys, one good thing to do is turn to the people in your life and get some advice. Ask them what they see, what they think you should be doing. Doesn't mean you have to follow it exactly, but it can open up your mind a little bit and so that you're not so tightly closed in, in your perspective. Well, Steph, we're almost out of time, but before we go, do you have any closing thoughts, any best practice, or any words of wisdom for all the young idealists watching in their team rooms, their city or offices, or their homes? 
Sure. Uh, I think it's really an experience from the work that I've done over the years. And, and I spend a lot of time telling stories about the terrible things that people do to other people. But out of those stories are the examples of people doing great things for other people. And they stand out. And what I've noticed, not only do I find them inspiring, but what I've noticed is that they can take many shapes and sizes and have different levels of effect. It could be just on a community, it could be on a country, it could be on the world at large. And for me, when I reflect on my own life and the good that can be done, I think what it has shown me is that there's no, there's no set way to have a positive impact on the world. There's no particular path you have to take to be a good person, to make the world a better place. That there are ways to do that in your daily life, with your job, with your community, no matter what it is that you decide to do. And you might feel like as an idealist, it's a struggle that you're gonna lose and it's too big. And sometimes idealists <laughs> suffer from that and it can, it can get tough. But just remember that there are lots of different ways to make a difference uh, and to benefit the people around you, whether it's through your work or just your daily life. You guys heard it here first. There are lots of different ways to make a difference. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Steph. And back to you at the desk, Chelsea. You're welcome.